Helen. The young girl was known as Flit to some and Flutter to others. Today she had discovered, on her explorations, a long sought-after treasure, which she now had safely packed within her suitcase to bring home. On her way back, she stopped by the mother mannequin, as she so often did. The mannequin still stood within the broken shop window, her clothes long rotted away to the wind and the rain. On the ground beside the mother lay her display mannequin child, broken and forlorn. She stood endlessly looking upon her fallen child, hand stretched out, never to hold again. Flutter watched the mother wistfully for a while, as she always did, but this time she slowly, hesitantly, approached and then gently detached the mannequin's hand to hold within her own. In Flutter's imagination, the hand was not severed at the wrist, but rather continued up an arm to a warm smile and soft crinkled eyes. A mother has freckles in her eyes that match her children's, Flutter murmured. She would put mittens on your hands when it's cold. And if you cry out in the night, she is always there, 
always. That is a mother. Flutter held the mother's hand and her precious suitcase in the other. Come, mother. It is time to go home. Everyone will be so excited. Flutter picked her way through the quiet, empty city, past the Rebirth store and VR Pod World. Curious drones occasionally flew down to take her picture, thinking with their simple AI that they were camouflaged by their kites and dead birds. They tried to disguise themselves by tying objects they knew were sometimes seen in the sky to their aging metal bodies Behind her lay a broken cell phone, and nailed to a telephone pole was a digital Jesus, an artist's social commentary, now lost and forgotten. Mother, you must always look both ways when crossing the street, said Flutter wisely, because, and here she faltered, at a loss as to why, seeing as she had never witnessed a moving car, because, well, so that you know where you have come from and to see where you are going. Flutter climbed the boxes and walked balance across the down TV antenna towards her home in the apartment building. Beside her stood row upon row of pods for the dreaming class, as the working class often derogatorily referred to them in the early stages. Everyone, though, eventually became a sleeper. Flutter continued her routine by stopping to visit one of the pod people. She looked upon the woman and squeezed the plastic hand within her own comfortingly. She could almost feel the hand continue up into a warm embrace as she looked down upon the still form. She looks a bit like me, and I like to think that she could be my mother, but I don't remember. Bertie says that she is his mother, but they don't look anything alike, she said dismissively. She is sleeping and dreaming in her other world. They are all like sleeping beauty. I have kissed her before, but she doesn't wake. You see the jar on the side, mother? That keeps the sleepers alive, and we eat those too, said Flutter, taking on the role of a teacher, patiently explaining something to a child. They don't really taste like much, but just a little on your finger and you won't be hungry for a month. The woman was naked for comfort, yet decided to sleep still wearing the latest fashionable hat. Flutter watched her for a few minutes, then continued. If the food canister runs out for a sleeper, then they die not long after. My mother still has lots in the bottom, and she will come back to me before then. I know she will. Flutter walked into a room to discover a pale boy sitting upon a giant white moth. A little rabbit hopped about, pestering them both. Oh, mother, this is Milk Drop. He is the Singularity AI. She paused a moment, as though arranging her thoughts. He is more like a person than the advert spiders and drones, but he is not like the other kids. 
He's very nice, though. He makes games for us, like Turing Weekend or Turing Pups and Kittens. We have to pick which things are real or pretend. Flutter smiled to Milk Drop. Milk Drop, this is my mother. The Singularity AI looked upon Flutter and replied earnestly, That is a plastic mannequin's hand, taken from the Christmas display window at Robin's Clothers. He paused for a moment. However, it is a pleasure to meet you, Hand. Mother, come pet the moth. It is so soft and powdery. Flutter caressed the moth gently with the hand. The moth barely reacted, having been petted countless times before. Flutter stood up. Well, goodbye, Milk Drop. We must get back. I have finally found the last piece to the home, and I get first pick tonight. Goodbye, Flutter. Goodbye, Hand, replied Milk Drop. Flutter opened the door to a room finding an advert spider clinging to the outside of the apartment building. When it saw her, it began projecting an advertisement upon the designated wall inside the room. Oh, hello, spider, said Flutter in a familiar sort of way. Greetings, Miss Flutter. May I say, with all due respect, that you are looking a bit tired today. I think perhaps... You need a bit more you time, Miss Flutter. Are your children brimming with curiosity and asking endless questions? You could always enroll them in Retelevise, a 16-week program which will imprint your child onto a device or media such as television, social media, or general media. This will return the you time to your day, so you may relax in a VR and drink a coffee. And are those wrinkles around? Here, Flutter interrupted the advert spider. It was important not to let them get on too much of a roll. You could make friends with them, in a limited sort of way, but today she was too excited and wanted to get home. Thank you, spider, but you know very well that I have no children. I don't really even know what you are talking about. The advert spider, long bereft of adults to advertise to, still attempted to fulfill its programming. My apologies, Flutter. Have a wonderful day, and I will speak to you soon when I have even more exciting opportunities for you. By the way, Miss Flutter, Spiderbot continued, do you have spider points? You can redeem them for... But Flutter had already left the room. Juniper! Juniper! Flutter whispered excitedly to the figure on the bed, who was draped under some blankets. I have the final piece to the house with me! Flutter watched the head and shoulders under the blanket turn to her voice like some unresolved clay. It is not safe out there, Flutter. Come under with me. Flutter climbed under the blanket with Juniper and held her close as she opened the suitcase to show her. So beautiful, said Juniper. What do you think will happen? Flutter thought for a moment, then replied excitedly while bouncing. I am not sure, but I go first tonight. The blanket rose a bit above the bed as she bounced, and Flutter felt a burst of cold air invade the warm blanket world. 
Oh, lucky, said Juniper, with just a hint of envy. What do Dick and Jane say will happen? They don't, so we will have to make it up. Flutter put the prize back into her suitcase and gave Juniper a hug before sliding out from the half-light of Juniper's blanket world. Flutter gently, almost reverently, took the Barbie doll out of its packaging. She held it out for the other kids to see, as though presenting a religious relic found amongst the bones of a lost civilization. Gretchen whispered to Teddy, It's a mother. The power pet was old and damaged. There was a distinctive whirr as it looked down upon the doll. She looks cold, he said, in his warm teddy bear voice. You are just jealous, Teddy, exclaimed Bertie. All mothers dressed like this. No, they didn't, replied Teddy, who had existed before the big sleep. Did too, countered Bertie, using the ageless children's retort. Well, Jane doesn't, stated Billy Boots looking across at the fun with Dick and Jane pages mounted on the wall. Not Sleeping Beauty either. They all turned to look at Willow, their unofficial leader. She had been looking quietly and steadily at the dollhouse. The father on the couch. The children upstairs. It doesn't matter, she said finally. The Dick and Janes don't tell us everything. After a moment, she continued. Whose turn is it? Flutter stood up excitedly. It is my turn today, and I pick the mother. Of course you do, said Bertie. I am next, and I pick the daddy. Everyone groaned. Bertie was not a very good player, and all preferred him to be one of the children instead. Gretchen, Why don't you be the daughter, and Billy Boots, you be the son? I will be the fact checker, said Willow. Bertie stepped towards the dollhouse. As the daddy, I tell the TV to make dinner. TVs can't make dinners, shouted Billy Boots. Mothers do that. And sometimes fathers, added Gretchen. Well then, what about TV dinners, said Bertie victoriously. They all turned to look at Willow, the checker, for a ruling. TVs told stories to the family, sometimes during dinner, but they didn't cook, she said decisively. Willow turned to Flutter. Your turn. And everyone watched expectantly. Flutter looked down upon the mannequin hand and then gently placed it within the suitcase. She took the mother doll to the front door of the dollhouse and then said in a whisper, Honey, I am home.